Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create some of these HUD effects, but I'm also gonna show you a few techniques that maybe you haven't seen before. For the Flatpak effects crew members, you can download all the project files via the link in the description below. Now this will work with pretty much any type of map that you want to use, but you do need something with a bit of contrast in it. So here I'm using OpenStreetMap. These are maps that you can use in your own projects. Now over here, you've got a few options as the type of maps that you can use. I'm using the transport map here, and you can basically just navigate to the area that you want to use as your map. Now I like this particular one because it works really well for this effect where we've got a lot of contrast between the white and the dark gray, and then these black lines as you'll see why in just a minute. If you end up using these maps, you will need to add an attribution down there, but you can see how to do all of that on their website. I'll have a link for OpenStreetMap down in the description below. So once you've got your screenshot, you'll end up with something like this. So what we're gonna do is create a new composition. Here's the settings that I'm using for mine. I've set mine to be about five seconds in length. And then we can take that map and I can just adjust this to get the position that I would like here on screen. And then we want to start extracting the dark and the light parts of our image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the extract feature here. Now you can find these by just searching for them up here under help. And basically we're just removing the white part here of the image or the lighter part and we're just gonna be left with basically this outline effect here. If you turn on the background, you can see that's just transparent. The next thing is we're gonna then apply a tint effect, and this is going to tint that layer to whatever color that you want. Now, if you wanna follow on exactly, these are the colors that I'm using here on screen. That basically just gives me that isolates those dark parts and, and sort of sets them as blue. Now we want to put that background back in. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate it. I'm gonna take that background layer and I'm just gonna remove the extract function on it. And then I'm going to apply this tint effect to it. So for the black part, I'm gonna make this a bit lighter. This is the exact color that I'm using here. And for the dark and for the white part, I'm going to make it this color here, which is a dark blue. Now that sort of gives it this dark pattern over the back, just kind of giving us a really nice effect to our map. Now over the top of this, we're going to add a dark sort of vignette. So I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer here. And to this, I'm just going to add the CC vignette. Again, you can find this up here. They're the settings that I've used here. Just kind of creates this dark and edge look. And then I'm gonna create another adjustment layer and I'm going to add the stylized glow effect. Now, these are the exact settings that I've changed here. I've just messed around with the threshold and the radius, and it just sort of gives it this light sort of glow effect to that color there in the backdrop. Now, if you like these sort of animations and you wanna learn more about how to create all different types of 2D animations, then check out my Animation Master course down in the description below. In that, I walk you through using After Effects from an absolute beginner right through to creating some really cool and interesting looking animations. There's graphs, there's maps, so many different types of animations that you learn how to create. I've had hundreds of students go through this course and get excellent results. You can watch and read all of those testimonials via the link in the description below. If you're just starting out or you're interested in really developing your skills in animation, then definitely check out my Animation Master course. Next, I actually wanna start creating my little HUD or my overlay effect. So what I'm going to do is create a new composition here and I'm gonna set this to be 800 by 800 pixels. So we end up roughly with this square. Now I can take my rectangle tool, I'm gonna to set this to be the ellipse, and I don't want to fill, and I'm also just gonna adjust this stroke effect down a little bit. And then holding shift, I'm just gonna draw out a circle which sort of sits like this on screen and readjust it here. I can dial this right down, just so we kind of end up with that outer ring. And then I can come down to the ellipse settings here and basically animate the path or the size of this. So I want it to sort of animate out and set this to be zero here at the start. So that's gonna animate basically out like this. Also make those easy ease. 
Now you can also add just another keyframe here. And with that middle one, what you can actually do is just slightly overextend that size. So it sort of does a little bit of a bounce effect. You can drag this out if you want more or less of that effect. You can also add on motion blur for that layer if you want motion blur. And I'm also gonna hit T and scale down this opacity, something around sort of 60%, just so that outline becomes a little bit transparent. Now what we can do is, because we've already got one, we can just duplicate this. And with that one underneath, we're going to off-center that. If I bring up those keyframes, what I want to do is basically select these last two keyframes with my playhead lined up there. I'm gonna scale this one down, and then I'm gonna come up here and scale up on that stroke layer. Also bring up the opacity for that layer now. So we should end up with two circles that are sort of offset. Now I'm also gonna take that layer, duplicate it again and off-center it. Gonna select both of those end keyframes again, scale this down and then scale up on the stroke path. And we're just going to work on this middle layer now because we just want to adjust that one. So what I want it to do is I basically want to add a trims path. So this will create that little sort of split in the end of my layer. So I can sort of just create a split, something like this. And then the off center or the offset basically rotates this around. Now an easy way to animate this is to alt click on the stopwatch. And I'm just gonna say, right, say something like times 50. And that's gonna create basically that spinning circle effect like that. Then I'm gonna come down to this layer and I wanna create basically like a dotted path. So I can come down here to the ellipse path and under the stroke, I'm going to add some dashes. Now I can basically scale this up. So we end up with say three like this. Now to animate this, what we're going to do is come down here and we're gonna go down to the transform properties and I want to change the rotation. So I'm going to alt click on that rotation stopwatch and I wanna type time times negative 90. So that's going to spin that layer in the opposite direction. Now, if you get some of this funny sort of stuff happening here where the layers are doubling up, come up here and delete that second position or that size keyframe so you don't get that effect happening. You're just kind of rotating the entire layer. You can basically layer these as many times as you want. You can add more dashes, you can add more gaps by adding more and more of these effects layered over the top of each other. But that's essentially what most of them entail. But something else that I also did was I added basically an adjustment layer over the top. And to this, I added a gradient ramp. So you can search for gradient ramp up there. And these are the colors that I've used for my gradient ramp, if you wanna follow along with exactly what I did. But that basically, by applying it to the adjustment layer, we can just control which layers have that effect applied to them. So now that we've got that basically HUD effect, we wanna put it into our map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that comp to in underneath that glow layer, but over the top of the vignette. So I want it to sit over the top here, but underneath. Now, if you need to adjust those colors, you can always come in here and adjust the basically intensity of that glow effect or come back in here and readjust the actual colors of this image or the HUD that you're using. Now to animate this, you can do this in a number of different ways, but basically if I hit position, I'm just gonna create basically like a bit of an animation, maybe scale this down and then sort of have it move up here towards Los Angeles, so we've kind of got like this effect playing out, something like that. And then when it gets to that position, then I want a little title to sort of pop up. So I did this here in my original by having these little titles sort of pop up like this. The way that I did that was I just came up here and created some text and basically I just want it to sort of sit about there. And in behind that, what I'm going to do is use my little rounded rectangle tool here and I wanna basically just set this to be like a white with no stroke. And all I'm going to do is just drag this in behind that text layer. Now you can come in here to the shape properties and you can adjust the roundness of that shape path. 
and then make sure it sits behind your shape layer. Now, if you need to adjust it, you can also come in here and just basically scale this out. Maybe adjust this down, something like that. So we kind of get that effect. I'm going to add under the effects and presets, I'm going to drag on the typewriter effect. So that's going to basically animate that text out. Can make these both easy ease. And then I want to animate out the, basically this box that sits behind it. So with that layer, what I can actually do is hit scale. I'm going to unlink those layers. And now I can actually adjust that position of that layer. Now, before I do that, what I'm going to do is come in here and adjust that anchor point using Y on the keyboard so that it sits on that far edge. So this will basically allow us now to move or scale that layer from zero all the way up to 100 on that X axis. So we kind of get this effect, something like that. Maybe just create an easy ease. And this one's going to be a little bit faster than the text. So we want that to sort of pop out a little bit faster. If I duplicate that map layer, the top map layer, I'm going to bring that basically across here. So I want it to sort of start animating about here. And to that, all you have to do is just change the tint colors. So for this, I'm just using these colors here. And that just sort of gives me this yellow sort of color over the blue. Now, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to hit T on my keyboard. I'm going to create basically an opacity sort of fade on effect, but I also want it to flicker. So what I'm also going to do is hold option or alt, click on that stopwatch, and I'm going to add a wiggle expression, something like five comma 30. And basically the first number is just the speed and the second number is how much you want it to actually dip down. And then you can also have this fade on. So it's kind of two effects working over the top, but that's how you kind of get that flicker effect. If you want it more intense, scale up this number or drop this down if you want it basically slower or bring it up if you want it faster. Then once we kind of got to this point, all I did was I just created a new layer, basically just sort of following roughly on that path here on the road, sort of coming down to this direction. I don't want any fill on that and I'm just going to add a very slight stroke effect, bring this down under all those layers. And then for this one, I'm just going to simply add the trims path, bring this across and just animate this on. So we sort of get that line animating like that. So I'm going to make sure that that line is under my HUD layer and I'm just going to simply duplicate that HUD. And because that HUD is already animated, what I'm going to do is just remove the position. I'm just going to drag it down here and then just scale this down so it sort of sits over the top. So as that line sort of gets to that point, then that line that second HUD then sort of pops up into frame. So we kind of get that animation. Now that's pretty much it as far as all the effects. I also just duplicated this layer here in my original and then sort of move that down. Now I added some little animation over the top. Now a simple way to do that is just simply by adding a null object, putting that over the top and just parenting everything except for the adjustment layers to that null. So that null then becomes our controller. So we can sort of move it back here, create a position and a scale keyframe, scale this in, move it up a little bit. So we sort of get that animation and then maybe move this down. something like that. And then to smooth out that animation, all you need to do is just make these keyframes easy ease. 
and then that helps basically just smooth out that entire animation. Now something else I also added here in my original was an overlay effect of all these sort of things flickering. Now all that is is just basically a video that I sourced online for free and you can basically just add it straight over the top. Now this is the clip that I'm using here and it's simply just like these basically glitch effects already in a video file and I just applied this over the top with a screen effect. So that basically removes the dark part of the image so we just kind of end up with that effect. You don't have to add that on but it just kind of adds that next level to that thing. I'll also have a link where you can find those sort of assets online. You can download them and add them into your personal projects. But that's pretty much it as far as creating this effect. So hopefully you picked up a few tips and techniques that you can use in your own projects. If you like this video, I can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can check out more videos just like this over here on the side of the screen. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.